on mute. Oh, thanks everybody for joining me on tonight's call. It is a Zoom session. Um, I'm just going to pop everybody on mute to the background noise, but looking at uh, last possession and looking at also anticipation. So where we can help each other build boundary and goal, we can support each other as um, goal umpires can assist the boundaries when they can't clearly see if the ball's gone over the line. Um, also the boundaries help the field umpires for if it is a uh, last you know, last possession and or clear touched or even traditionally as it goes out of bounds on the full. So a couple of things um, that we want to cover off. I did share a video that we're going to go into shortly, but what I wanted to play for you, and hopefully this video on a test of waters, this video works uh, for everybody. And that is a topic I saw around last possession that the Sandful actual team, the Sandful Crows team, uh, put together last year uh, in regards to last possession to try and help. I guess it's trying to help their um, SNFL team to better understand last possession. So uh, before we jump into any any you know Q and A, I wanted to share this uh, particular video. So hopefully it works. And we go into it here, got it in Messenger, and hopefully it plays. So looking at last possession, free kick will be awarded to a player who kicks a handballs of football over the boundary line without the football being touched by another player. So I'm hoping for a couple of examples where it's clearly kicked or clearly handballed. And with this particular video, I'm happy to share it in the uh, in the chat in the in the group as well. We've got some good examples. It's got some good examples to look at from everybody involved from field boundary and goal. So what we're seeing difference and point of difference from our game, Sandful, to AFL, and <clears throat> it's really that the AFL haven't adopted it yet, but it's only probably a matter of time before they do adopt it. But you'll see field umpires will pay a deliberate out of bounds instead. Now, I know I'm sorry for all the other fans of football out there, regarding uh, showing a video of the crows all the time. But uh, looking at it, um, it just gives you a bit of an insight to what the Sandful <clears throat> Crows team put together as a bit of an, in, in, you know, an awareness campaign around this particular topic, trying to make it easier for the fans. Because obviously we see a lot of frustrated uh, spectators and fans come to our game after watching AFL uh, and there's a slight tweak or a slight difference in, in view of our rules and, and, you know, like rush behinds for a score of a, of a, of a point that we would give, they're paying a free kick and things like that versus this deliberate out of bounds. That's what's becoming more apparent or obvious um, rather because they don't have last possession. And one of the interesting comments made by, and I don't know if I come across in the audio, but the stats of how uh, contested the game of footy has become and the, the, the spirit of the law, I guess, around the spirit of the law that the ball shall be kept in motion, um, last possession really takes, takes that on board. So looking at it for wherever possible, it's made our game a lot easier, like we where we've got people, boundary umpires, not able to keep up with, you know, not now supply enough boundary umpires to keep up with play or the game's fast moving uh, and they're not able to, to and, and really not able to see across the line and, and be clear that it's crossed the line by, by hand or foot um, when it's closely contested near the boundary line. So I don't know if there's any comments around this one. You can share what you like, uh, come off mute. 
around last possession. Any, any discussions around that? Feel free. Um, one thing with the last possession rule I've found, one of the un, sort of unknown parts about it is the shepherding out of bounds. Like you're not allowed to shepherd. It's like your opponent yep. handballed it. You're not allowed to shepherd it out of bounds. I feel like that's pretty unknown amongst players. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent, Bryce. Yeah, so <clears throat> you've got two players going for the footy. Excuse me, two players going for the footy. One decides to defend, fend off, shepherd off another player, and the ball rolls over the line. Um, what are they looking for? They're looking for us to pay last last possession. Whereas in the case of where anybody could have the opportunity to collect the footy, they're not able to. We won't. They're not able then to be disadvantaged. We're going to have a boundary throw in. Yeah, that one's a grey area for some. Um, but what I've got is a pretty good, you know, synopsis from South SNFL uh, um, head of umpiring Shane Harris. He does a bit of an audio dub. Uh, it's a midway through my 18 minute video. I think it's about the 10, 11 minute mark of my laws of interpretation video that I put together for 2022 and much the same of 2023 it hasn't changed at all. Really. There's not been any changes. So it really continues on for our, our season this year. And, um, it's a matter of us, again, educating the players, coaching the players and being consistent like all of the rules, but being really consistent with this one and how we communicate it. So, um, yeah. You'll find a lot of uh, a boundary throw in in a ruck contest. People still want, you know, the guy punches the ball, the girl punches the ball, line goes towards the line, <clears throat> and they want to have, oh, that's deliberate. You know, you, I heard it all, all yesterday. I couldn't believe, that's another one. I couldn't believe yesterday. Unbelievable that they didn't know it. So they want, it's like only when the ball's not clear over the, over the boundary line on the full is it going to be a free kick. So, yeah. Any other comments, good, bad, ugly, things that you know you notice that can help us as uh, individual umpires be consistent with this particular, enforcing this particular rule? Just make sure that it's actually a possession, that it hasn't just banged into a bloke's shin as he bent down to pick up the ball and rolled over the boundary line. Some people do pay that, I've noticed, and it shouldn't be. It's, it's got to be an actual possession of the footy. You have mm. to intentionally try to kick it or handball it. If you yeah. mishandle it onto your chin and it rolls sideways and goes over the boundary line, that's not a possession. 100%. Schooner, thank you for sharing. That's a good one too. So accidental. Look at the a player under, under pressure, players around them, and it, it knocks, yeah, like you said, um, chin, um, you know, below the knee, anything below the knee is deemed a kick. So, or a possession is not um, a deliberate act. Then we're not going to pay that one. We're going to throw it in. So the boundary throwing is the lesser of, of anything. A ball up is the lesser of, of anything. So we always look for that when in doubt. Um, but if you believe it is a clear possession, again, kick or handball, right? We're looking for that. Taking Five. possession of the footy and then disposing of it. Go for it, Tim. Has it always been possession? Like, was it ever sort of last touch? And I only asked because of mm. uh, players... They, they're very confused in a lot of cases about what should be called. Yeah. But I think so, it's really clear, but players seem to not have a good grasp of it. Yeah. So the the last touch rule, that was something that was put in, it was refer, referenced to. So the language around it being last touch. So you think of it like basketball or netball, uh, where the ball, last player to touch it, and they get it for a kick. And in some leagues where boundary umpires are non-existent, they are adopting that kind of rule. Um, Buzz isn't on the call tonight, but he could probably share what he was about what KI is doing at the minute. That's kind of a last touch scenario because they just don't have the boundary umpires. They've got 10, 11 year olds running the boundary. They're not throwing the ball in. They're just, you know, letting the, the field umpire. It's, uh, the ball's crossed the line and it's gone out of bounds. And so they've got, right, who touched it last? That's the kind of concept that last touch represents, Tim. <clears throat> but players will uh, get confused over that. That's for sure. All right, pretty cool. Short, sharp on last possession, but something, as I said, we work together with our other uh, other cohorts, you know, our other disciplines, I should say, in boundary and goals. If you're a field umpire and you're watching this video and you're unsure, check out the, uh, about, as I said, 10, 11 minute mark of my laws interpretation video. So that's cool. Um, what I want to do now is digress to 
the video that I put in the link. Did everyone see that in time? Well, I sent it out as well by messenger, but also put it in the Facebook group. There's a link. Everyone get that? I'm hoping. I didn't see it, Simon. All right. Well, what I'll do for a reference, I will put it in the chat. So I'll come back to it. I'll just copy and paste it now for you all to see in our chat tonight. <clears throat> and don't play it now, but again, there's a couple of examples in this one. So everyone should be able to see that now. Um, it's a YouTube video. It is a while ago, but they're all sandful examples. Um, purely from a, uh, there's a couple of what's your decisions. So the first five examples, of what's your decisions. I'm actually going to um, skip past those for to, you know for the sake of keeping everyone engaged and on the on the call tonight. So just going to skip past those. I think there's five examples. Yeah, five examples. But the key to it all is what with anticipation. What's the key? Throw some throw some at me. Any ideas? What's the key for anticipation? Why is it a thing? So you're not caught miles behind the play. Yeah. And when the old saying is keep up with the game, umpy gets yelled out from some spectator. <laughs> so getting into the right position is everything in what we do. Now, for past footballers or players that join the ranks of umpiring, a lot of the times players will follow, we call ball watching, will follow the ball. Rather than looking at what's going on around the footy with the players involved. And also a little acronym we come up with, it's a, the C, was it the CDMP, comfortable decision-making position. Getting into that comfortable decision-making position to be able to see what's going on with the footy around it you know, off the ball and uh, player in possession of the football as well. So you might be, you might say, Simon, you know, back in my day when I played, you know, I was one of the fastest runners out there. I played the wing, I played half forward flank, you know, set shots up, you know, but I, I, I don't actually um, look at, you know, nowadays I don't look at myself as one of the fastest getting around. With anticipation, the ability to get into the right position using the right angles, you know, your right angles to get into um, is, a, is, a, is a skill. It's a trained skill. And it's about actually reading the play and seeing where it's going to end up. All right. So again, the footy is oblong shape. It could bounce in misdirection. That's, that can happen to the best of us and we can get caught out um, at times. But if we, read the play and anticipate they're going to end up going over this direction. I can position myself uh, with a good distance from play, you know, 20 to 25 metres away is a good distance from play uh, in general. When we're able to then move into a position, you know, where we need to, you know, take control or give, give communication that they can hear us, it might be we need to get in a little bit closer. But at times when they're just contesting the ball in general play, we know that we don't want to get too close. We also want, don't want to be in a spot where uh, if we're down the, you know, in either end zone that the player's leading out, the full forwards, they're going to cut, you know, we're going to cut them off. We're going to get run into, all right? So it's about taking up a position where you anticipate that the ball's going to land and that you're still maintaining the distance that is between 20 to 25 metres away, all right? Being forward of the contest as it lands is, is also, and you're moving with it. Same as I covered last Wednesday night at training about boundary throw-ins of said it a few times at Wednesday night's training, but around looking at where we position ourselves rather than being too front on, we're able to push wide and create an angle that is forward of side on. And as the throw-in comes in as a boundary throw-in, we're able to move around that pack uh, and get back into get back in board to where the major axis is, the middle part of our of our oval. All right. So we're if we're able to do that and keep vision of players uh, under uh, keeping them under observation at all times, never turning our back on play. Um, we're able to make up uh, ground, early ground, rather than and rather than getting caught behind. So it's all about position. It's all about reading it uh, and, and seeing what uh, what unfolds. 
So has there been a, is there any commentary on that from those that may have watched the video and or haven't watched the video but can add some value to the to the topic of tonight's discussion in anticipation? Or have I covered it brilliantly? I'll say that jokingly. <laughs> I was probably gonna say anticip it's a bit of a it's a bit of a yeah, no, it's no brainer, but often often anticipation and positioning comes if you've got some good teamwork with your colleagues so you know who's who's on who's who's um and what you can do we can have the forward vision where you're setting up for the next kick and particularly if you, um observing the signs of when they're squaring off and when they're going forward the players when they're playing to keep so being aware of those non-verbal cues from your peers really helps with your positioning and anticipation of where the, the um the ball who's a who's in control but b where you can set yourself up best for the next kick yeah that's a good one so squaring off mods you said handing it looks like they're going to hand over that that ability to win the the kicker coming out of say for 50 meters mm. you know let's say class, classic every time we should be seeing the ball getting kicked out of 50 because the ability of the, the pull back or player that's kicking the ball lead back into play after a point you know they're running their potentially full distance outside the, the kickoff line and using that full distance, they're going to kick that footy even further. So what? rather than us as the end zone umpire making it hard work for us, let's that square off and hand it up. You don't even have to say yours to the other other, yeah. other umpire. The number two that's looking at it from, you know, back on the square line, potentially, they're going to be a bit further back from the actual centre square, depending on the size of oval. You know, they're already reading, anticipating that that's going to be a handover. So that's clear for everybody around to know <clears throat> I've got play might be a mark uh, and they pay the mark, but then it's continuing to move down the direction that number two was headed. So that's another cue for us. Blow the mark. It's now the person that was umpiring to kick out needs to come up. They were the number one. Now they've got to come up, police the mark. You know, that's what I've got to go. All right, but I don't have to bust your, uh, your, your backside to get there because the next kick is going to kick it further downfield. And that's where that number two that took the mark, a blue for the mark, is then going to take next act of play down the ground and needs to anticipate, okay, where they're going to kick it. A lot of the time, they're going to use that wing down the corridor. Not always are they going to come inboard. So we can adjust our position if we need to, to back, back, back towards the major axis, even uh, further on the other side if they do short kick it inside in, inboard. Um, so we're not caught out of, out of uh, position and we're still maintaining that side on. Good. Anything else from anybody else? On anticipation. <clears throat> no. I'll add this. Within control, general play, we're talking about in the middle of the ground sort of scenario, we can actually add, uh, add value. I'm going to say add value to anticipating that the kick can come out of that contest or a handle out of that contest, whereby you can actually position yourself for the next passage of play. So by moving two or three metres to the side, you know, right or left, if you've got an, an uh, if you're in a two umpire system, you're going to want to move to the other direction away from your teammate. All right. Meaning that the other number two should be watching that contest in support. And as you deviate, if you're going to deviate anywhere, you're going to deviate away from your number two, all right? Because what we'll see a lot of times is if we deviate towards our number two and the kick comes out quick, we're now looking up backsides and we're behind play for that kick that we should have really been forward of. We're now behind it. We're well and truly behind it. So that's, that's a skill that I've mentioned about anticipating reading the play, being enough distance around the packs but also deviating one to two, three metres either side, all right? So that's where my examples, you know, from the sample, they do it well, <clears throat> they get good distance and they move around the packs quite, quite efficiently. And again, we might not be the fastest, you know, around to do this. We want to be able to adjust our position pretty quickly uh, as best of your ability, but really setting yourself up to get the next, to get that contest and get the next contest that may occur. All right. So I'm going to share the, let's see, let's see how we go. Share the video. 
which is around anticipation and positioning. Let's have a look at some examples here. Like I said, it's going to give us some tips. So the key to good decision making is position, work rate. I've got lots of urgency about what they do here. So let's see if this works for us. We'll just pause it after this one. See what you noticed. All right. Anyone want to share with the first example, Sturt versus Eagles, around the field umpires movement? Who wants to go first? I'll give it a go. You know like Thanks, Dave. You notice the, the field umpire when he's backing back was curling which way he was anticipating the ball to go. Yeah. Eventually, he had a ball up, so he, he, he actually came out on the arc. But he, as he was coming back, he was go, going one way or the other. Yeah. And which way he thought it, he might, which way he thought it might go. Yeah. And obviously, looking at sample, they've got three umpires. But in this case, this is right in the middle of the ground. He's just balled up, start of the match. Could happen. He's backed out pretty quickly. He's got a good distance from play. And then he's adjusted his position, like I said, two or three metres one way. He's chosen which direction he thinks it's going to go. It doesn't. goes back in, another ball up. But that little tweak, just that one tweak, if, if you can visually see that as an example and apply that to your game, you'll get, you'll get, you know, you'll get better and better uh, at reading the play uh, as you as you guys uh, progress with your umpire. It's going to be a natural thing that you naturally do. I know you can say, oh, we can't teach old dogs new tricks, but I'm sure this is just a little subtle thing that you can go, hang on a minute, if I just go that way, and he went right of screen, let's imagine that number two is left of screen. That's the classic example that I just talked about um, just now. Cool, cool. All right, we'll move on. Let's see what the next one looks like and just watch what the umpire does. Uh, and we'll see if we get someone to um, give us their, their take on it. <clears throat> All right, there's an example there. Hopefully you saw that one. Sturt versus Eagles again. Who wants to take uh, commentary of what umpire? I think it's Tom, Tom Burke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So look, look once again, as as it said from the heading at the start of the um that particular video, is don't get sucked in. So he, he backed back, but at the same time, a bit like what you were saying before, Simon, he was going forward of the play, knowing that number two, number the the, the end zone mm -hmm. has probably run to cover, and it's got the back end of that contest covered, so he could he could afford to go forward. Assuming number the um, end zone did go did run to cover, yeah. So if we talk about this, the kick it could have popped out if it went inside fifty to the right of screen. We've got someone there covering yeah. us, but he anticipated and he moved to the left of screen, thinking, "Hang yeah. on, I don't know which team's going which way here, but 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 let's say Sturt are going to the le left and Eagles are going to the yeah. right of screen. He's backing Sturt to get the blue team to get the ball out and it's yeah. going to the left of the screen. And so he also, what he does here, if he stays side on to this contest, he'll have players, if you look at them, a mm. Sturt player and an Eagle player where the ball is, they're blocking his view, right? He won't be able to see anything if it's a head high contact or a push in the back. These are the ones we're going to be looking for for a volatile situation. So really key that, again, we don't stand still. We're not flat footed. We're on the move. Uh, and we're able to keep a good distance, not get too close to play, not get sucked in, and then uh, also calling for a ball up, you know, just for the sake of calling the ball up. And before you know it, we see 20, 30 ball ups in a game, and it just becomes a congested game. The ball shall be kept in motion. Just keep that in the back of your minds that we want to see the ball come out. We just delay the whistle, and it pops out, and it's play on. Beauty. All right, let's go to the next one. So these are working out okay, these videos, yeah? So can we see the ball player's head and shoulders here? What do you reckon? Anyone got some commentary on that one? No, oh, the is it North Adelaide? Yeah, West North. East, North. East? Yeah, North. North. Um, looks, his his head was facing towards the oh, outer side, so the umpire <laughs> moved and had had a good. Um, had a good, uh, had a good 
positioning, but it looked like from that that he was looking he was looking from behind, which you know, in a situation like that he probably couldn't have done a lot about. I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, and can't guess, right? So again, yeah. here the ball ball got trapped, ball was stagnant, and if there was a free kick in there, he can't guess. So the lesser of the two is a ball up, so he's gone for the ball up. No, he can't play a free kick to North. He can't play a free kick to Nord. But looking at it, he's deviated uh, around the pack. Again, he's the end zone. He's deviated around the pack to choose the gap that may present itself between players that where he gets very congested like that. Many of us would be happy to be standing to the right of the screen and just running straight at it. What he's chosen to do is arc around two or three metres and run in at an angle. It's, it's just so polished like from a match management perspective start doing that um mate we'll, we'll be giving everybody a grade let me tell you <laughs> and sending you out the sandful because they need you all right that's a joke but they do need you we are moving on i need you don't go anywhere stay with us stay tuned in here we go next one it came out quick work ahead of the ball all right so the footy's gone Look at this umpire moving very quickly, but all of a sudden there's a decision to be made. He hasn't taken his eyes off the play. I know I've, I've covered it pretty quickly. We need to move to see the footy at all times. So very noticeable, the pace of that. Now, not everybody's expected to run that fast, let me tell you. But a key to that one is that he never took his eyes off the contest. All right? He prepared to run past the contest, but he never took his eyes off, off the bike. Yeah. The, the other good thing there was as mid-zone and three-umpire system, he worked the diamond. So he didn't actually just run down the major axis. He actually ran, he worked the diamond as he would the old one-umpire system as well. Just to add more to that, Mods, diamond for everybody, those playing at home. So for the mid-zone, ideally you're working the diamond between you're working out to the wing and then the ball tracks in, you work along... Um, to the to the uh, middle of the, or the middle of the back of the square or to the top of the fifty, then you potentially if a ball gets switched again, you work it. You basically try and run a diamond in the mid zone to try and make sure you're staying side on and you're keeping your distance. Cool. So center half back, the wing center half forward, back center half forward, away like using diamonds. We looked at yeah, it that laid, laying over the uh, the center square. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it helps you run smart. So you're actually keeping a distance, and you're not having to you know zigzag all the time, you mm. know, just, just in and out sort of from the mid from the uh, major axis. Because what they can do if you're running zigzag all the time, fatigues your legs very quickly. All right, let's move to see the footy at all times. Who wants to take this next one? All right, this one you just seen as an example, the end zone. Anyone want to chat about that? What'd you notice? Anything at all? Nothing. Silence is golden. All right, I'll take it. So one thing to notice here, this is an end zone, I guess. We'll look at it, you know, going into finals, looking at umpiring three umpire system, uh, being aware of your surroundings. The end zone here, this umpire in control, he pushes uh, left of screen at that sort of angle. Again, trying to find a gap between the contest. He's not sucked in to pay an early whistle for a ball up. Again, we're going to be delaying that whistle uh, a little bit longer. Just seeing what happens with the footy. We're also trying to see, you know, ball player, head, shoulders, that sort of thing, and the football. But what it will do is it will push that number two as a, we work as a, a sort of elastic and you can't see the number two in the frame, but as an elastic band, yeah, we work, work up and back, um, pushes that number two further back as the, as the end zone comes out towards the 50 meter arc. So it's really uh, crucial that we're not, um, you know, we're a kick and a half away at least from that. If the ball did come out, you know, the, this umpire then would just square off at the 50 and hand it over. If it was a long kick, but if it was a short kick, you'd see, or a short handball, or a handball, uh, a long handball. And over short handball would be tap and retain, meaning tap uh, the, the chest. The so sound keeping it is a non-verbal cue. 
Um, and that's another key thing to, to not get, you know, be familiar with your surroundings around the ground. Where are you positioned? Where are you located? Where is your, uh, potentially where is your other teammate, your other number two um, in regards to a contest like this? So the ball gets trapped uh, and then we're easily, easily from a good distance coming in and, and balling the ball up. All right. So hopefully that's helpful for everybody watching. We'll move along. Next example. Okay. So we're not watching the footy. We're watching the players in our zone. See if you can see this one. Okay. Who wants to take it? Anybody? The player was going for the ball and it was taken too high. He was, but what did you notice about our position of our umpire to see it? He was in a good position to see the angle of it and he wasn't blocked by other players coming into his view. All right. So what uh, I've noticed, yep. I was going to say what he did. He wasn't worried because he, because he, because he knew the mid zone had the kick coming in. He wasn't worried about watching the that particular actor play. He was watching the um, forwards. He was in good position, so he could see any holds, and he was pretty focused on the ball. He wasn't worried about the ball. He knew the ball was going to come in, so he just basically watched the players. Correct. He had forward vision. Forward vision, exactly. So good topic. What I'll do is I'll go back slightly. I'll play it and I'll pause it where I like the position of this umpire. I'll give it a chance to play out again. So this is the other example. And then I'll just talk about it. <clears throat> All right. So just pause it there and then clear the, the pause. Okay. So see the position. You can see the 50, All right, Big number 50. Right on top of that, about you know, a couple meters, five meters in, is where he's taking up position. All right. So he's out of the leading full forwards as the ball's coming in. He's the opposite side um, where he's taken up position. And this is one of the things that I encourage all of our A graders going into finals, particularly when we run a three umpire or beyond this this weekend. If you run a, happen to run a three umpire, because we have the luxury of uh, sufficient numbers, um, but just to be wary, right of his focus, his vision is that that look of the contest, that marking contest. And he trusts the other umpire, right, for that other kick coming out of the mid zone there. He trusts the other umpire to take care of any anything that happens there last act of play. Now, we can find, uh, many of our individuals will find themselves lost in that no man's land, which is about 10, 15 metres forwards all right, in between the two south players, you can see there's a south player running just inside of the 50 meter arc. And the next one, which is just forward of the contest, the marking contest, we'll find ourselves stuck there. I'll, I'll see a lot of people as the end zone umpire position, take up position there, rather than be an extra five, 10 meters this side towards the camera. Okay, this is, uh, what's this oval called again? Flinders University Oval. Um, at South Adelaide, and uh, we want to be to the west, western side uh, of that southern end. We want to either or be northern end or southern end, but this one's the southern end, be the western side of it, that five, 10 metres towards the, away from the major axis, which is that imaginary line. These, these two are marking contests is pretty much smack bang on the, on the major axis. So if we could have it divided up into halves and push ourselves wider, we then see the ball coming in. We're not having to quickly react and trying to adjust our position. He's in a comfortable decision-making position purely because he's anticipated that's where it's going to, the leading full forward's going to end up and, and has adjusted his position accordingly. And then his vision is purely on that contest. That's why he sees the, the high contact that happens afterwards when the ball spills over the, over the marking contest, falls at the back, and he just moves a couple of centimetres in our, our vision on our screen, which is about, you know, five to 10 metres in his adjustment, and he sees the free kick. I think the key, Simon, is not to get sucked in because I think more than often than not, people will try to go, you know, five or 10 metres towards that Balfour's pie van. I know I might like it, but <laughs> <laughs> towards the pie van. Um, and... Yep. And, and that's where you were saying in between those two South players is that's where the, if you get sucked in, that's where you're going to be. Yeah. And you'll find people will pirouette either side of the major axis, like all the last minute, rather than actually taking up a spot earlier 
we do it earlier, then we save ourselves a heck of a load of running and fast paced running where we, we cook our legs. So yeah, getting sucked in, um, it's been a, a bit of a, a topic, you know, I mentioned, it's been mentioned a few times tonight and, and it's totally a, a up to us, you know, to not get sucked into that one there and, and, and being in the, the, the full forwards leading position. 100% lucky, 100%. All right, we're going to quickly, I reckon we'll finish up after this one. Must keep the ball player under observations at all times. So this will be our last one. Have a, have a go at this one. I think it is. All right, what do you reckon? Anybody have a go at it? Uh, FAD? Potential, yeah, yeah. Um, Pushing the back. The after he's disposed of the footy, <laughs> taken to the ground. Yep. Uh, yep. But what did you notice about the umpire, the umpire's movement? Oh, he was in the way. No, he, I, was, I... he was pedaling okay. pretty, pretty hard backwards. But if you talked about the diamond before mods and a three umpire system, yeah. What you were insinuating is that he doesn't get too close to the center circle, yeah. which is exactly where he was. But what he what he did do though is he recognised he was coming the angle and he actually he actually pivoted and backed back out and tried to create some separation and distance. Um, so he adjusted on the fly um, to the ball coming for, for the for the nor for the Norwood taking the inside option from the half back flank. All right, so here he is here. I'm just going to pause. Here he is here, the contest behind the player with the football. You can see it just behind there. Uh, gone to ground. So last act of play is really important that we keep that under observation. He's done the bit to the uh, wing side of the centre square. And now this is where he needs to make a decision. Does he backpedal directly to the centre circle to get out of the way? Does he try to pirouette with his back uh, towards the fence. So as the, as the player with the ball has it, gives it off and he gets out of the way to his, like a left-hand pirouette, so to speak, and then allows the ball to be kicked away from him because this sideways angle, right, doesn't keep the, him on the move. It actually will stop him. I don't, there's too, not only too many people that can actually uh, run fast sideways, right? <laughs> like a side-to-side -side shuffle that we do in a warm-up. You know, our grapevines, our side-to-sides. Not many people can go side-to-sides pretty quickly. So it's a slow movement um, and without maybe tearing a groin muscle. We don't want that for anybody. So what he has to do is he has to make a decision like, like that's been alluded to. He's got to get going. And his backwards movement directly, like he's not worried because he has another umpire down the end zone to cover him. In this case... If you're the number one in control and you have your number two to the left of screen managing the end zone, you could do this. If you're the number two receiving the ball here because you're number one umpire it's to the right of screen at the other end zone, you're going to find this very tricky. <laughs> All right. Because you turn your back, what he does is he turns his back on play where the kick is going to end up. And what you notice is two players remonstrating in, in that left of screen that the ball gets kicked. So you know, whether it's a push in the back, we've got to, we're going to back to it. We're not going to see it. So again, let's just watch it. I'll just see if I can play it again. See him backpedaled now. So I'll just pause it again. So he's backpedaled now, but he's also turning his, he's decided he's going to turn with his back towards the uh, fence, towards the Flurio milk sign. Um, and he's still backing backpedaling pretty quickly to get out of the kicker because he doesn't want to get injured or run into. And the centrals player on the left of the screen here that could potentially smother, he could potentially tackle, who knows? He could do something stupid, right? Last act of play. And the guy who's, who's got the footy being chased down by the, the centrals player on the right of screen is also coming at him with at pace. So he needs to watch this, this last act of play. Okay, so he's got his vision on the contest. Again, here's the number 39 from Central's on the left of the screen trying to smother. Kick goes over the top. He misses it. Potentially, right, there's a free kick, as you can see, pushing the back downfield. I don't know whether Mitchy here, Mitch Scott is the umpire, whether he pays that downfield. But nonetheless, 
there's a contest here and whether he's holding or he marks the ball, great. But it, it all depends on knowing where your other umpire, your number two is, if you're the number one controlling umpire in this instance, where are they located? Where are they positioned? Okay. Um, and we can't see any, any umpire in the end zone here because I imagine they are just outside of vision, right, to the left of the screen, yeah, on the arc of the 50, watching the, the contest as it unfolds. So, again, it all depends on where your teammate is, what your teammate's prepared to do, uh, and obviously as far as your ability to run backwards quickly, yeah, the turn and go, you can make up a lot of ground. still keep players under observation, Pushing wide, pushing wide from the major axis is a key to this. So mm -hmm. that you can arc around and see, uh, you know, this umpire here, Mitch, he could have arced around as he was going along the flurry of milk sign and, and lob up just at the top of 50 to see this contest. But if he, he has to do it quickly. He has to read the play quicker. Um, if it was just him on his own managing, the, managing that, that action or that play. And that's probably a mid zone key there too because it's about 45 out. In a three umpire, it is, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you'd you'd be wanting your end zone to offer assistance and help, yeah. Because I imagine then there's not a single player left in the goal square. If there is, I'd be surprised. But I imagine then yeah. no player left in the goal square because they've all pushed up. So as the end zone, you'd push up to the edge of, of, of fifty, and you'd offer assistance. Yeah, if he's well caught off, well behind, you'd offer yeah. assistance. And, and is that your? If we go towards three umpire systems, um, Simon, are you? Are you expecting mid zone, mid zone to keep to 40 or keep to 50? What's depends the general rule of thumb? Depends, depends who you're running with and the conversation that you have with them that set up the game at the start, all right? Mm -hmm. Because you've got ability to run all day and ability to have had a – you might have a big passage of play for three or four minutes in the mid zone, you're cooked and you're, and you're looking to get out, right? And it just really depends on the day and the situation that happens. Yep. But I would expect in this scenario here where the end zone is offering assistance and help, if there's anything obvious and blatant that we're going to pay it, there's nothing obvious and blatant we're not paying it. We're leaving it to the mid zone, as you mentioned, to keep and, and work through and, and keep that because it's five, five or so meters inside the 50 meter arc and push our end zones deep if there's players, particularly if there's players and if, if there is in this one here where there's in the full forward or forward mm -hmm. pocket, true forward pocket or forward uh, full forward position. Because right? this is probably a, a center half forward dropping back or you know, who knows, it could be the full forward is pushed right mm -hmm. up. It really depends on reading the game. Probably forward pushing it up with the squeeze they do nowadays. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, um, this is an old, old video. It's 2021, but it's still relevant for us. It's still relevant uh, examples for us to utilise. All right, cool. I'm going to leave that there. So let me just jump out of sharing my screen and we'll come back to uh, Zoom. Um, excellent. So any questions or comments on any of that, please let me know. I uh, hope that uh, you're all keeping fit, keeping warm and look at after yourself. We're going into um, round 15 in the, uh, the men's comp on Saturday. We also got the Great Southern Women's uh, Grand Final on Sunday. So uh, we'll just get all those uh, appointments as usual Put into HQ tomorrow night and catch up with you all on tra at training on uh, Wednesday, Hackham. Um, but yeah, anticipation, last possession, all of the things as, as great field umpires take control, lead the charge, have clear communication with our teammates, with our fellow umpires, both field boundary and goal. Uh, and uh, we look after each other. I'm going to call that on the video. Uh, let me just stop recording.